is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to our man Dave and Claire. Warren. Hey, Dave, Happy New Year. What's happening, man? <clears throat> happy New Year too, my brother. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. How you been? I am doing well, man. I'm doing well. Can I throw a quote out at you? Sure. <laughs> in the market, somebody knows something. Someone always knows something. That statement was made by a great trader by the name of Tom O'Brien about six, seven years ago. Years ago. Oh, yeah. And it kind of hit me like a brick. But you're right. Somebody always knows something. Hey, Carlos, what's going on, brother? I'm calling you back, Tom. This morning I had a pleasure to talk to you and your son, and I don't want to miss the opportunity to talk to you again. Why? Well, I think you made some money on this bond. <laughs> oh, yes, Tom. Your newsletter helped me. That's a beautiful to, uh... thing. We appreciate the growling problem with us out here. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Don't make assumptions. Learn to ask questions. It's always better to ask questions than make assumptions. Have the courage to ask questions until you're as clear as you can be. Once you hear the answer to the question, you won't have to make the assumption because you'll know the truth. So I guess if they tell you the truth, right? Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 320. NASDAQ is up 83. S&Ps are up 26. You get high volatility. You get high markets. The Dow is up 1.2%. The NASDAQ is up 1.1%. S&Ps are up 1%. And this is, seems to be all about whether we're going to have a shutdown or not. Uh, bottom line is it looks that uh, they're uh, pushing, uh, that they're going to push a plan through tomorrow uh, in the House, they're shot the votes right now, but the bottom line is that um, what the House Speaker, Paul Ryan, is figuring is that his own party is not going to uh, vote against uh, an extension for a month. Uh, but uh, everyone's playing chicken out there. That's the bottom line, folks. Uh, this last expansion that you did you just did see, though, uh, coming topside was uh, when it come across the tape that the White House was behind the plan. They were going to push the plan. Uh, bottom line is that, um, you know, they, they're, they, they're going to basically push this out tomorrow and, and see whether they can get the votes. Um, they're nine-shot votes right now. That's how this is shaking out. Um, gold contract. Gold contract is uh, down $8, trading at thirteen twenty nine. 20. You have the silver contract uh, down 13 cents, $17. Platinum. Platinum is uh, trading up $6, 1,009. We have light sweet crude up 22 cents, $63.95 a barrel. Notes. The 10 year note down nine ticks, 122.22. 30 year bond down 16 at 150.17. Now, if we go over and we take a look at the, let's go to the 10 year first. So, 10 year is down 1.2 million contracts. We are, are testing the low from last Friday. We pull this baby up and take a look at it. You know, it broke down on the 9th of January. Uh, 9th of January, that's when we went from the price point of 123.16 uh, down into this uh, 122.31 area. Um, right now, you're going into 1.6 million contracts. You've done 1.28. Your low there is 122.22. 122.20, and that's exactly what we tested. So as we come into this close, um, we'll see whether we're going to get rejection. Thus far, you don't have rejection of price. You do have a lot less volume. 30 year, we take a look at the 30 year. What you have with the 30 year out here is this. 30 year bond right now is trading down 16 ticks. And that baby has 269,000 contracts. Now, this is quite a way away from uh, a major swing. A major swing on the 30 year is 147. The last time we had got down to 149 last week. This is definitely backing down with dramatically lighter volume. You're going into 374,000 contracts and you've only done 269 thus far. So when you take a look at the 30 year, um, 30 year, a lot stronger than the 10. Uh, bottom line, uh, we'll see whether it holds. King dollar, let's go over to King dollar and take a look at King dollar. Would you have a King dollar right now? You've had some high volatility in King dollar. 
The high for the day, we started up uh, approximately uh, 300 uh, ticks at 90.575. You got down to 89.960. Uh, now, you rejected lower price. That being said, when you were coming downtown, guess what? You get 30,000 contracts. That's good contract volume uh, down at those levels. The 30-year, the 10-year, rather, would have to get back inside uh, the 90.990 in order to basically get inside its higher range. Gold contract. What do we got? The gold contract. Gold contract out here. GC. G. Okay. Gold contracts down seven dollars and eighty cents. We are trading at 1329. You've done 341,000 contracts. That's still big contract volume, folks, getting into higher price. Yesterday was a monster day. We did uh, 500,000 contracts at 1345. So that's telling me that, guess what? It still wants higher price. Um, and that is saying that the dollar is still going to fail. We go over and take a look at uh, Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin has some, always has some nice volatility. Uh, big volatility out here today inside Bitcoin. The high for today was 11,792. The low, 9,185. Um, I wouldn't be touching this thing. And the reason being is that it looks that the way that this is trading right now. So picture something. You know, we came down off the high of 19,500. You did, your first low is 10,700. You did a nice counter trend bounce up to 16,900. We got down to 81. 85 today. This has a monster gap at 83. It hasn't hit yet. And now you get a beautiful doji. And what happens with something like this, many times a doji is a halfway move down. So check this out. This is going to be really wild if that's the case. Because you take the top of it, which is 16,900, let's call it 17. You take the low, which is nine. It's like, really? That's 8,000 bucks, right? It's like, okay, are you going to go back to like $1,000? Yeah, it's that bizarre, folks. So I wouldn't touch it. I suspect first off what we're going to do is we're going to get into uh, 8328. If this goes to 1000 bucks, man, it will be insane. 16000 Yeah, 9000 That's how that's set up. It's, a, it's approximate, but that's how it's set up, man. Yeah, I wouldn't be touching it. No way, Jose. Let's go take a look at some of the... Higher volume stocks out here, this is what you have happening. You have GE. Uh, let's start with GE. GE, folks, is toast. GE, they're going to, you know, been talking about this for a while. Um, you get an expansion of volume. You've broken the swing points here. Your next leg down probably has started. Uh, in GE's case, I suspect what you have here is uh, with laying out here is 1135. And you're at 1735. You break, you you come into 1135, and that is the high of the low of 2009. If you come into that area with too much volume, bottom line, you're going to get to the 572. And what this is all about is that they came out this, yesterday, said they're writing down another uh, 15 billion. Um, they're writing 7 billion immediately, another you know 9 billion over the course of eight years out of the GE Capital. Bottom line is that they're hiding everything inside GE Capital. GE Capital has a huge problem, folks, and I suspect when all said and done, guess what? They just fired up those books, cooked them up good, baby, and we'll see that, and that's they've probably been cooking them for years. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Go get them, folks. 
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrial is right now at 305. You get the NASDAQ up 82. S&Ps are up 25. If we go inside the Dow Industrials, taking a look at the uh, strength out here, what you have, uh, good old Boeing is the number. Once again, folks, uh, each and every day, Boeing is the mover up here, whether the Dow is going up or down. Uh, out of the uh, 305 uh, points, uh, Boeing is 83 of the positive, so it's pretty intense. Uh, you have United Health uh, 35, IBM 34, 3M 24. Taken away from it, Goldman's still the culprit on the way down. Uh, Goldman, if Goldman wasn't down, you'd be all set. Uh, the Dow, uh, well, Dow looks like it's all set anyway. Uh, bottom line is that uh, Goldman's taking away, uh, that's putting a, a negative 37 points into it. GE's putting a negative six points into it. The amazing thing about GE, of course, is that, you know, you have GE uh, down about 8%. Um, if that was ever a high volume, a high price stock, that would be a whole different animal. But uh, what you have here is that, the Dow Industrial is skewed to high price stock. So you have a $17 stock down 92 cents, uh, which uh, bottom line only puts six negative points into the Dow Industrials. We go and we take a look at the NDX 100. Leaders inside the NDX 100 uh, today is that uh, you have uh, AS. ML Holdings, that's up 7.5%. These are all the chips uh, makers. Lamb Research is up 7% or $14.16. You have uh, Clack up 6% uh, and you have AMAT up 5%. So let's stay with Lamb Research for a second. We take a look at Lamb. Lamb's up $14.22. This is quite a, quite a move. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and you get some volume behind the move. Uh, Lamb had topped out at 219. November 21st comes down to 175. Uh, bottom line is that that's making its way into that big downdraft where it went from 211 to 189. Let's AMAT. Let's go look at AMAT. AMAT's also going into its downdraft. 13 million shares versus 25. That's taken out a minor swing uh, of 56.45, but it has volume behind the move. So guess what? AMAC can also go up and retest its highs up there, $60.89. Uh, Pretty intense. There's no two ways about that. Uh, SMHs. Let's go to the SMHs, of course. Inside the ETF structure, that's where they are. Uh, SMHs right now are trading at $105.98. And that is an all-time high. Uh, that has taken out the high of November uh, 22nd, and that has taken that baby uh, out today. Uh, let's go take a look at the Gold Corp. Uh, so Gold Corp right now, that's down 62 cents. 
and that's going to fill the gap. So Gold Corp goes topside yesterday, uh, 15.55, has volume behind the moves, got everything. This just, it, it, okay, so well, I want to stay right here for a second. So when you have large gaps, folks, right, what Gold Corp did yesterday was this. Gold Corp had a high uh, on Friday of $14.35. Uh, we opened up yesterday, and you opened at $14.98, and you went topside to $15.55. If you're long a stock like this, you much rather this come back and fill it immediately. That's the bottom line. Where the danger always comes in is that you have a gap higher, you keep going higher, and you go up another 20 or 30 percent. Then you turn around and go after the gap. So if you're long an equity like this, like one of the targets in the den, he's just showing that he's down 4 percent, which very well is. But what also happens inside the gold stocks, if you, st if you keep percentages inside the gold stock, it'll drive you crazy. Because the reality is that when they go up, they can go up 20 or 30 percent um, in a heartbeat. And because they're smaller price stocks, it's the same percentage move, but they move a lot heavier up and down. Bottom line, the way that Gold Corp moved out here, Gold Corp wants to trade up to 1787. You know, it broke the downtrend, broke it with volume. We'll see where the rest of it uh, does shake out. If we go take a look at the GDX out here, what you have with the GDX? GDX, uh, this little baby, uh, when this broke topside, this is an ABC structure up, broke the B point, broke it with volume. It did, what, 55 million versus 43. Good number. Um, that's, that's a nice ABC structure on the way up. Uh, this is backing into uh, the 24 area right now. You get dramatically lighter volume versus how we went up. It's going into 43 million shares. You've only done 21 million. Uh, not a bad setup. The, some of the higher volume stocks out here, you get AK Steel up 27 cents. Uh, Juno Therapeutics, that's the number, man. Holy cow. Uh, this, this had put some juice under the biotechs for a bit today. That's up 33% or $23. It's trading at $68.60. And let's see what this was all about. Okay. Okay, so it's a takeover report that uh, Celgene uh, wants to buy. Uh, yeah, Celgene, it's a, this is a takeover report that CELG, Celgene wants to take over um, Juno Therapeutics. Celgene right now, oh, they got to take over someone. It's a dog. So Celgene just went from $147 down to 102 and has a high volume low at 94 So let me pull this back again for a second because what's going to be interesting here is that, yeah, that's going to be just a nice, looks to me like that is just a nice rumor. And this is why. So check this out. Celgene, pull this back a bit more. Okay, so Celgene came down hard off 147, has a high volume at 94, wants to go after that. And they're gonna, they, the bottom line is that they need something. The real question is, do they have the cash versus just the stock? Because <coughs> I don't expect that Juno Therapeutics um, would take the stock. The stock's a dog. So the real question is going to be, you know, you can, you can have a takeover either way with paper, of course, or with cash, uh, depending on what market and how strong the paper is, you know, that's what kind of figures out whether it goes or not. Now, Juno Therapeutics is going into its high from June of 2015. If you want to see something intriguing, that's a high volume high. So bottom line is that I expect it will go there. That's, well, they actually just tested it today. $69, <coughs> excuse me, folks, uh, 28 cents was the high from June of 2015. And we hit uh, Seventy dollars today, so that's going up there. It's going to test it. Uh, we'll see whether at the end of the month we have high high volume or not. You know, right right now, of course, uh, we're in three quarters uh, through the trading month. 
and uh, we'll see whether that thing is going to get shaken out. Let's go and we take a look at the XAU, the HUI, both the XAU and the HUI. They also broke topside, have volume behind the move. Uh, the XAU today got to a price point of 90, 94, and the high that's shooting for is 93.39. The Gold Bugs Index, uh, that hit a high today out here of uh, 20502, and that's going after. Uh, the 220 mark. Uh, both of them, when they did break top side last week, they had the volume behind the move. So nice, nice moves, particularly uh, we had some nice moves out here yesterday. You, you pushed into highs, you had volume into highs. This is Tom O'Brien, this is TFNN. Dow Industrials right now up 294, NASDAQ is up 73, SPs are up 22. Come right back. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials right now up 300. You get the NASDAQ up uh, 73. S&Ps are up uh, 22. Uh, bottom line is that, uh, let's see, when we're taking a look at... Uh, what kind of volumes do we have up here? So on the uh, NYSE, oh, this is going to be intriguing. <clears throat> so yesterday we hit a high. <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. Um, we did 1 billion shares. Now, this is going to be the test of the high. Oh, this is cool, man. So we're at 562 million. If you go back, let's go back over to the Dow Industrials again. And what you're going to see, now it's going to be crucial that the Dow actually closes over 26,086. 
Because what you have now, now you have the test, we're not going to get 500 million coming into the close. Uh, we will get a couple hundred million. Uh, right now, the NASDAQ, we're at 1.7 versus 2.3. So if I take a look at the composite, the composite looks like more than likely we're going to test the highs tomorrow. The composite, we're at 72.97 and 73.30 is the high. Um, I expect that will get tested. The reason being is that it looks to me like it will stay up into the close. When you get that close after the Dow has already tested, the probability is pretty good that that will get tested. Uh, now, that being said, the small caps are still a whole different animal. Uh, it's going to get intriguing in the next uh, 20 minutes, uh, 15 minutes, to see what these small caps can do. Uh, because they've continued to be weak. They did end up doing it. This morning, they were only a 0 0.382 retracement of the whole move down. They got to a 0 0.618 retracement and just got to it, too, which is pretty cool. So if we take a look at it, you're going to see that from the highs to the lows out here, um, this is really wild because it just tagged it like, so the 0.618 retracement was 1593.01. We hit 1593.30. So we'll see if there's any action on the way down. This, the small cap would actually have to get back inside the 1586 area uh, to really want to go lower either overnight or in the morning. What they like to do with the small caps, though, with the Russell, the Russell always seems to be up two or three or four points, and they kind of slam it at the beginning of the day uh, each and every day. That's how that seems to be shaken out. If we go and we take a look at Apple, Apple is pushing a whole bunch of news out here today. So Apple's expecting that's going to uh, pay uh, $38 billion, uh, to bring back the amount of money that they have overseas. Um, the, uh, so let's see what they're saying. Apple said it will bring back hundreds of billions of overseas dollars. They're going to pay $38 billion on taxes on bringing it back. They plan capital expenditures of $30 billion in the U.S. over the next five years. Uh, they're going to create 20,000 jobs at existing sites, and they have just opened another site in Cupertino, um, Cupertino rather, uh, and that's where they're, they're located anyway. Um, it's, uh, so Tim Cook, uh, one of his quotes, so we're focused on investments in areas where we have direct impact on job creation and job preparedness. Um, Let's see. Apple has the largest offshore cash reserves, uh, $252 billion as of the end of September. The $30 billion in capital expenditures will come as part of the $350 billion Apple expects to spend in the U.S. over the next five years, uh, including 20,000 jobs at its campuses, data centers, and retail stores, uh, but not third-party developers for iPhone or Apple. Uh, Mac apps as an economy Apple has touted in the past. Apple said that part of the $30 million on capital expenditures will be toward a new U.S.-based campus, new data centers, and additional supplier investments. Yeah, they, see, they're getting into supplier investments. This is kind of intriguing. The company, which opened a new headquarters in Cupertino last year, said its new U.S. site initially will be focused on employees who provide technical support to Apple product users. The new location which Apple said will it will announce later this year will be similar to the capital's existing campus in Austin, Texas, for supply chain and technical support employees. Apple's <coughs> excuse me, folks. Apple said it will increase its local manufacturing fund announced last year from one billion to five billion, indicating that it will be sourcing more components for its products domestically. As part of the original fund, Apple invested in Corning and Finstar companies that make products for the iPhone, glass screens and lasers for Face ID and iPods, AirPods, respectively. There are probably many capital expenditure initiatives and new site build-outs that Apple was already planning on doing regardless of the repatriation. Uh, what's not said in the release is that there is more potential for increased buybacks for shareholders and acquisitions that might not have to taken place if, if the cash didn't come from overseas. Bottom line, Apple's trading up 265. And that is the all-time high out here. It was yesterday, uh, 179.39, I believe. All right. Yeah. So Apple is coming right up. Also, 
testing its high from uh, yesterday. And uh, that, has, that has volume behind the move. Uh, Apple had volume yesterday, and you get volume out here today. So it's going to be intriguing, because if Apple can actually stay above this uh, 177, put this on a weekly. Yeah, that can stay above that. You might have another AB up, ABC up 150. It's about a $25 ABC, which would get you 60, 76, 86, 91. That'll be a 191 inside Apple. And if we take a look at their, uh, let's see, so the next time they come out, they, they're coming out, Apple's coming out with numbers February 1st. And right now, 2018. So let's see. 86 billion they're going to be looking for. So this is, this is always Apple's biggest quarter, you know, because the way that they, they are, they do not have a, calendar year quarter, which is really cool. In fact, you know, you, what happens is that uh, on the C-Corps, you have to have the, the, the C-Corps that are left without calendar year quarters, folks, um, have a huge advantage. Uh, in the tax bill, that happened with Apple, uh, but there's a lot of other advantages uh, because of that, because what happens is that most C-Corps have a lot of other companies underneath those C-Corps, and what ends up happening, of course, is that the planning aspect of them um, is really great. Whether it's a three-month or six-month lag, there's always a lag that's going on on a continual basis that you can plan your tax uh, taxes out in a way that you can defer taxes for, for a good amount of time. Let's go take a look at uh, the king dog here. So a Amazon, Amazon was giving up this morning. Let's see what happened uh, throughout the day. Oh, there you go. Uh, Amazon was as low as 12.80 this morning. Uh, tore back 18 points. Now here at 12.98. Let's see when this thing took place. So we hit the low out here at uh, 10.40 this morning, 12.80. Just kind of traded sideways from them. But Amazon still has some good volume uh, up at these levels. Uh, Google, we take a look at Google. Google also rejected lower price out here at $1,117 this morning. And they just kept buying it. You know, the high of yesterday was up there at uh, 11.39, but right now you're at 11.30. Uh, the, you know, it was intriguing. The only one that was really up uh, good this morning uh, was Microsoft. Microsoft was up good. Uh, you're up a buck 69 right now. Now, that hasn't touched the high yet, um, but that was the strong one this morning. Now, a lot of these other NDX stocks have caught up with it. Dow Industrials up 3.25, NASDAQ up 178, up 78, NASDAQ, S&P's up 24. Come right back, folks. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. If you haven't tried David White's weekly investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, then this month is your perfect opportunity. On January 17th at 5 p.m., Dave will be hosting a special subscriber webinar where he'll be presenting on the newest feature in his newsletter, short-term sector charts that work on both the madness and wisdom of crowds. Join Dave on January 17th as he describes the method he uses to recognize these signals on a sector-by-sector -sector basis 
Price and as he discusses how he used this new tool to buy the gold miners in their seemingly darkest hour in December. And all new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. If you're a trader scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity, then now is a great time to sign up for the Technology Insider. For all the information and for details on Dave's subscriber event taking place January 17th, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you haven't tried David White's daily trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, then this month is your perfect opportunity. On January 17th at 5 p.m., Dave will be hosting a special subscriber webinar where he'll be presenting on the newest feature in his newsletter, short-term sector charts that work on both the madness and wisdom of crowds. Join Dave on January 17th as he describes the method he uses to recognize these signals on a sector-by-sector -sector basis and as as he discusses how he used this new tool to buy the gold miners in their seemingly darkest hour in December. And all new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. If you're a trader scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity, then now is a great time to sign up for the Path of Least Resistance. For all the information and for details on Dave's subscriber event taking place January 17th, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials right now up uh, 331. You get the Nasdaq up 79. S&Ps are up 25. Let's get over and we take a look at good old Goldman Sachs. So Goldman come out with numbers this morning, folks. Uh, bottom line. Um, numbers uh, weren't there. Uh, they sold Goldman down from the high of a 262 to 248. Right now, you're at 252.94. You have monster volume on the way down, and the kicker on Goldman is going to be pretty wild watching this thing shake out because the number to watch at the end of the month is going to be 250.70. What that number is, uh, that was the 2007 high that Goldman took out, dramatically lighter volume. Um, Failed the first time it took it out. That was in uh, March of 2017. Got all the way back top side again. Took it out again, and the correlation is 53 million versus the high where it failed at 90 million versus the high that it's actually going after and broke of 227. So you can see the correlation. 227 million was the high that was generated in 2007. <clears throat> it took that out in March of 2017. It got over it, closed under it, so you had a failed test, dramatically lighter volume, you, it went from 255 and you got down to 209. We come all the way back topside again, this time you do 53 million, so pictures, you do 53 versus the 90 where it failed versus that 255, 227 level. level. Um, so, you know, the bottom line is that uh, they, they not only sold this down hard, uh, inside of this, um, you know, bottom line is that they, they have some problems. Uh, let's see. This, uh, this article here is saying that Gal Goldman used to seem invincible in the fourth quarter it lost money. The Wall Street firm on Wednesday f reported the first quarterly loss since 2011 of uh, one time $4.4 billion charge stemming from the new tax law, but even ignoring th that unusual event, Goldman's weak core results showed how far the firm has fallen. Let's see where they dig into this. Um, okay, so the bank's per share earnings and revenue were both higher compared with a year earlier without the tax charge, but the results announced Wednesday also revealed decline in, in Goldman's trading might, which had drained, which had been drained by potent combination of uh, Placid markets and quiet clients. Revenue in its business of buying and selling bonds, commodities, and currencies uh, sank to one billion in the fourth quarter, uh, half of what it was in the same period of 2016. Imagine that. That's trading, though, man. But that's pretty intense. So they made one billion versus two billion a year earlier. Uh, for the net, for the year, net revenue uh, in that business fell 30 percent. Uh, tighter financial regulations, strikingly uh, global monetary policy, 
uh, hit and trading at banks like Goldman especially had. Uh, on Wednesday, the bank used one word to describe the current condition on Wall Street as challenging. <coughs> its clients are placing fewer trade orders than they did when the market prices were changing more quickly and more dramatically. Well, that's normal, folks, okay? Because if you're trading, you need volatility. When there's a one-way market, bottom line, you buy something, you hold it, great. You can make a huge amount of money. There's no doubt about that. The trading community, however, um, thrives on buying and selling in two-way markets. Um, overall, Goldman's quarterly loss of nearly $2 billion, uh, the $4.4 billion tie. Po Goldman posted a quarterly loss of $2 billion, the $4.4 billion tied to the tax loss stems from a requirement that companies move cash from overseas back to the U.S. and reverse and revalue assets. Goldman announced its poor fourth quarter showing as speculation mounted about who would succeed Lloyd Blankfield as the chief executive. Blankfield has held, held the job for 12 years, two leading contenders. Um, uh, the two chief operating officers and presidents, Javi Swartz and David Solomon. Uh, both men have been asked to find ways to address the problems in Goldman's trading business. Um, Mr. Solomon faced a development of different kind on Wednesday when federal prosecutors in Manhattan unsealed an indictment charging Nicholas uh, DeMeyer De Fawdy with stealing one point two million worth of rare wine from a former employee. The former employee in question was Mr. Solomon, who employed Mr. DeMeyer as a personal assistant, according to sources familiar with the matter. Oh, this is a trip. Okay, well, one second. Mr. Solomon, Faith, all these guys are working together. After the indictment, the wine was stolen. The wine was stolen. According to the indictment, the wine was stolen October 2014 to started them to October 2016 when Mr. Meyer had been asked to transport it from the former employee's apartment to his wine cellar in East Hampton. Uh, Mr. DeMaio was arrested in Los Angeles on Tuesday, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office. Mr. DeMaio cannot believe the death was discovered in the fall of 2016 and reported to uh, law folks at that time. So this is pretty, <laughs> a lot of wine. We'll see. 1.2 million worth of wine. Just the transportation of that um, was pretty dicey, too. So we'll see where that is going to shake out. The XLE. Let's go into the uh, energies out here. So that was the financials. Uh, XLE, bottom line, that uh, still wants to test high, the highs from last Friday. $77.62. Right now, we're at $77.19. If we go into the actual contract out here, we take a look at the crude oil contract. Crude oil is trading at $63.89. And I'm going to do the CL continuous contract. So the continuous contract, I think this is like the level of $62.58, I think. Yeah, $62.58. And so in the continuous contract, folks, that's the number to keep your eye on. Now, where a dollar, let's say 40 over that level, that's not enough for a real break. Um, this has to get up a couple more dollars in order to basically say, okay, it's breaking topside and it has the juice behind it. Um, and if you don't get that, you're going to see this thing get back underneath uh, the 62.58. You get back underneath that, then that's going to be the range. The top of that range would be the 62. Bottom of the top of the trading range would be 42. So you get a $20 uh, range there. You know, the lows that were established at 26, that was in uh, 2016. You know, we'll see. Uh, that I wouldn't consider that actually the bottom of the range. The bottom of the range would be the last swing point we had, which was on the 30th. It was June 30th, June of 2017. Uh, inside the, uh, you get uh, heating oil going for 206 a, bar uh, a gallon wholesale. Gasoline is 185 um, wholesale. That's unleaded. And that's, that's, them babies are staying at highs, too. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. The, um, you get natural gas. That's up 4% right now. That's trading $3.26. And that's got that's caught a bid again. No, no two ways about that. That's caught a bid. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. So natural gas looks like 332 is on the uh, agenda here. 332, uh, 344 is game. You know, uh, NG1. Let's go take a look at the continuous contract there. 
Oh, this is interesting. The continuous contract took out a... Yeah, 343 is game. And 399 is the high. So there's action there. And that's uh, evidently, there's a, there's a cold spell that's coming in to Florida to, here tonight. It's just going to be here and gone, but it's going to be a beauty. It's going to be uh, all of like 36 degrees, folks, which we don't get. You stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow's up 323. Nasdaq is up 76. S&P's up 23. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com. Dot com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com. Then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. The Dow right now is up 320. You get the NASDAQ up, uh, let's see, uh, 60. No, NASDAQ is up 72. S&Ps are up uh, 21. You get the uh, small cap uh, futures up uh, 12. Uh, bottom line is that uh, let's go first uh, into the Dow Industrial. So this number is going to be intriguing in the Dow um, 23,000, 26,086. Yeah, we're way over it. We're at 23,109. So the, the Dow is going to finish at an all time high. Uh, we go into the uh, SP. We take a look at the SP. The cash SP right now, we are trading right at the high from yesterday. The high was uh, 2807.54. And uh, we traded up till 2807. So that hit another all time high. We take a look at the SPY. Uh, SPY got to a price point of 28005 today. 28009 was the high of yesterday. Um, right next to it. Pretty amazing. The NDX 100, we take a look at the three Qs. 
Three Qs up a buck 67 at 165.69. Now that didn't, uh, 166.41 is the high out there. Uh, so the Qs didn't quite make it. Uh, the IWM uh, is the only one that uh, basically uh, didn't actually even get close. IW, the high in IWM is 159.41. Uh, you did 157.93. And the IWM would have to get back inside the 155.41 to be inside the lower range. Uh, you know, the IWM has the uh, best chance of actually doing that first. The reason being, um, is that it, it took the longest for it to break, break topside. What it also has, which all the indices have, by the way, they have the, the December 1st high volume low. Um, the difference with the IWM and the Russell is that you're not too far away from it. That's what it comes down to. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming back with a lot of numbers after the close. We are in earnings season right now. Dow Industrials are up 307. You get the NASDAQ are trading up 69. S&Ps are up 19 and a half. We are going to be coming right back. <clears throat> You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Oh, look who oh, we have. it's a beautiful day. Look at our man, Jim from Minneapolis. We're going to take him by storm. Taking it by storm, baby. <laughs> I love that. That's a great saying, man. Hey, what's happening, brother? Good morning, gentlemen. How you guys doing today? Good, man. Yourself? Oh, man. It's been the most incredible couple of days since when I called in on Friday. Litecoin busted out of that consolidation on the two-hour chart. Okay. And it just never looked back. It did a 100-point ABC up, and now it's very extended the way I look at it. But yeah. Holy tomo I mean, it went up to $420 last night. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever. You focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Be impeccable with your word. Manifest your true intentions. Regardless of what language you speak, your intent will, will manifest through the word. What you dream, what you feel, and what you really are will be manifested through what you say each and every day. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 322. NASDAQ up 74, S&P's up 21, Dow Industrials were, were up 1.2%, they had the NASDAQ up 1%, S&P's up 9 tenths of 1%. Gold contract down $8.20, trading at $13.28. You had the silver contract uh, off 15 cents, trading at a price point of $17.03. Uh, that put the silver contract uh, down nine tenths of one percent. Gold was down six tenths of one percent. Oil, oil uh, up 16 cents, trading $63.88. That's a flat market. Notes and bonds, 10-year note down nine ticks, trading 122.22. 30-year bond 
down 13 ticks, trading 150.13. Let's go over and take a look at that 10-year, that right off the bat first. Why? Because the 10-year, folks, uh, is what did break down, you know, last week. Uh, bottom line, it, it did not jump off the cliff, though. Uh, when it broke down, you know, we got to a price point of 122.20. Uh, we got down to that once again today, and we're closing right at it. We're at 122.22. So I suspect, you know, now we're going into that level with a couple hundred thousand lighter contracts. We did, the last time we were down here, did 1.6 million contracts. We did 1.3 today. That being said, when you're closing at the lower end, of the trade, bottom line, you can go down inside and break that pretty easily. So tomorrow morning is going to be a big number. That being said, if we go over and we take a look at the 30-year, the 30-year bottom line is not close to <clears throat> its major swing point, which is the 147 mark. Right now, the 30-year is trading out at a price point of 150.13. You take a look at the TLT, bottom line, uh, the TLT, the last time that we actually went lower, it did not break its lower swing point of 122.42. Um, that little baby right now is at 124.87. So you get some divergence uh, inside uh, that bond market. King dollar. King dollar, that had the volatility out here today. So first, let's go take a look at the contract we're trading. And then we're going to take a look at the continuous contract. So the contract we're trading is the March contract. Uh, that had a nice price spread out here today. You had a high of 90.575. You went down to a low of 89.960. And then it clawed its way all the way back. That being said, <clears throat> what, what we have here is that you have a lower low and you get volume behind the move, lower. Last low out here was 24,000 contracts. What we did out here today was 32,000. Uh, the, on the continuous contract, in order to get back inside its higher range, because the continuous contract is saying that gold, that the dollar index rather, is in a very large ABC structure on the way down, and it's 90.990. That's what what the continuous contract would have to get back inside of in order to negate an ABC structure on the way down. Now, there's two different ways uh, that you have to look at this. And what it is is this, is that if you come back inside that range and it has light volume, guess what? That's a complex ABC down. It doesn't change it. If the volume does expand, that's a whole different ballgame. That's how that shakes out. Uh, we get over and we take a look at um, Bitcoin. Bitcoin out here today high volatility, monster volatility. Um, you know, Bitcoin has always had high volatility. Uh, today was uh, pretty substantial. We had a high of 11,700, a low of 91.85. Uh, so we're talking about, what, $2,500 swing. Uh, you're at 10,791. And I wouldn't be, you know, I know this is a deep retracement. We've already come down from 19,500. And so when you're actually looking at that, you've come down over, from the low of today, you've come over, down over $10,000 in the um, span of uh, one month. So that's pretty intense, no doubt. That being said, you get a wide-ranging doji out here today. And many times that doji is the halfway move down of a move down. If that's what it is, folks, guess what? I mean, I pull this back. That would be saying that Bitcoin is going to go back to thousand dollars. <throat> this is pretty wild. So, you know how this this would go? This is like bizarre. Bitcoin was at thousand dollars, thousand and ninety nine dollars, uh, April of twenty seventeen. So less than a year ago, Bitcoin was thousand dollars. That's where it's said it can go. Um, pretty wild. Let's go over to Apple for a second. Apple just announced, uh, this is just coming across the tape right now. Let's see, uh, Apple told employees uh, this afternoon that it's going to issue uh, bonuses, uh, issuing a bonus of 2,500 worth of res oh, restricted stock units. I see, interesting. The rest of them are giving cash, they're going to give stock units at highs. Let's see what they're saying. Uh, the iPhone maker uh, will begin issuing stock grants to most employees worldwide in the coming months. Um, the move comes in the same day Apple said it would bring back most of its cash from overseas and spend $30 billion in the U.S. over the next five years. 
Uh, Apple didn't respond for comment. Apple's work is, App, Apple workers below the senior level of director will be eligible to receive the stock units. The company has uh, more than 120,000 employees. So we'll see. Um, Hey, it's, it's, still, it's still a good deal. Bottom line is that they're doing it with paper. Now, it's intriguing about what them doing with paper versus just, you know, everyone else is turning around saying, okay, we're going to give you a thousand bucks, which Apple very well could have done real easy. Um, they didn't. You know, does that mean that they think that their stock is at high price and they're using their stock as cash? I would say, yeah, why not? That's, we can give away paper versus cash, folks, each and every time you're going to want to do it. And it doesn't say right now, one of the questions, are like, uh, what is the unit, how long is the restriction? That information is not here because this just came across the tape. Let's go take a look at the um, uh, Alcoa. Alcoa closed at $56.99. That right now is trading at $55.28. And let's see what they have to say. Uh, fourth quarter adjusted earnings is $1.04. Their revenue uh, is $3.17 billion. The expected revenue is $3.29. You stay right there, folks. We're going to be coming back with our man, Mr. Dave White. We are going to be talking markets. Dow finished up 322. NASDAQ up 74. S&P's up 21. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Dave White. And don't forget, folks, every trading day, Dave does a great program, 2 to 3 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Dave also has a couple great newsletters. He has the Path of Least Resistance and the Tech Insider. Tonight, he's got something special for you uh, coming up uh, tonight from 5 o'clock. As soon as my program's over, 
Dave's going to be doing a webinar, and that webinar is going to be all about uh, the short-term sector uh, webinar, oscillator webinar. Uh, you can come over to our website at TFNN. You can sign up for either one of Dave's newsletters. They come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. As you hit that, you're going to be in the webinar tonight, uh, and I'm going to let Dave explain exactly uh, how this works, what he's been doing with it, and what you are going to learn tonight. So check it out right in the front page of TFNN. And folks, remember that if you can't make it live here tonight, no big deal. Just come sign up. Uh, it'll be on your page for a full 30 days. You can go over it as many times as you like. Dave White, what's going on? Ready to rock and what? roll? Well, I am, and uh, I'm very enthused about how uh, well this has worked uh, so far. And, uh, you know, you, you take kind of a simple idea and you kind of expand on it and make it uh, something much better than it was to begin with. It's kind of rewarding in its own way when yeah, something kind of jumps off the screen at you and you go, you know what, <laughs> this is, this is a pot some t potential dynamite. Uh, for long term, it certainly helps me out as a fan of uh, the summation index for a long time. But I just couldn't hang through uh, the ups and downs because it, it it's great for medium term or even a longer term trend. But I've always been looking for something that work, would work a little bit better in the sectors. And a lot of times I hear you on the on your show and you'll say something like, well, let's dig in and take a look at all these Dow stocks and see what's actually going on inside them. And this is kind of that. It is kind of a uh, way to take a look at a, a sector, but a lot cleaner than a lot, a lot of other ways. And also look for the incredible uh, euphoria in the uh, depression. And I always love that saying from the 20s and 30s in the hog pits of Kansas City, Sell them while they're yelling and buy them when they're crying. And that's yeah. basically what this thing does is tell you uh, when they're screaming and uh, when they're uh, crying. And, you know, what's really cool here, folks, is this, is that so most times when people are looking at markets uh, and, you know, you're looking at the larger, broader uh, indices. And depending on how long you've been in the market, what happens many times is that I, I give you an idea just of last year. Do you know what I mean? Markets up big. And then a lot of people are looking at their portfolio and say, why aren't I up this big? And it has to do with the sectors. So what Dave has done here is that this is, can work on the sectors, which is really cool, because we both know, and I'm sure many of the folks know, that you, know, you can be uh, in the market and not be up as much as the market is or down as much as the market is, because sometimes there's two or three equities that are driving uh, indice prices much higher or lower. So it's pretty cool, man. Um, it is. And, you know, you can buy when everybody else is selling and sell when everybody else is buying and have some kind of level of confidence about what's going on. Yes. Uh, I'll explain why it works and how it works and how close it actually comes to the theoretical. But uh, I've got uh, it split up now with 21 different sectors. 21 sectors, man. That's pretty so cool. So you can... If you're looking for a faster horse <laughs> yeah. or finding one that maybe had made a low and that you want to start investigating it, um, th this is a good way to look at it because a lot of times uh, there's a lot of noise in between the highs and the lows and you really don't know what's going on. But this one really lets you uh, jump out. I've got kind of a band in all these charts that kind of shows you uh, kind of the average. Okay. And then once you get past that band, you're really looking at the outliers and these stocks and you can take a quick look at the next time it comes out of that band and let you know that hey there it is and you and I and any other trader has always wanted a uh, a indicator that gave you at least a little bit of heads up maybe a day or two that things were getting ready so you could do your work and figure out what you wanted to do and this does have a fairly decent history of leading the market a little bit maybe a day or two. <coughs> Well, no, so, I, and I heard you on your show today, which was pretty cool, because you, you were talking about the aspect that, uh, you know, you could have so many equities inside the sector go into the nine, but yet not get hit on price big and then go back topside, test it out. You know, so I, 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 I look forward to the webinar tonight to see exactly how this thing works. Uh, but uh, that in itself is cool, because what happens, folks, is that... Um, 
the testing procedure, whether it's up or down on a continual basis, releases a lot of information from the marketplace. And in this particular case, um, as Dave just said, you're getting a heads up prior to that. And let me tell you something, if you get 24 hours, that's great. Give me, give me, give me three hours, definitely 20, <laughs> give, give me three minutes. <laughs> well, I, I was showing about how it worked in the gold miners where you had yeah. the kind of slight pullback. Yeah. But you had all the stocks in the uh, GDXJ, uh, save one, right. I think, two, uh, all dip below the nine day yeah. uh, at the bottom. And basically, you're back up way above it again. Uh, and just a, a week ago, they were all way above uh, the extremes at the highs and let you know that there was going to be kind of a uh, pullback coming. I didn't think there was going to be that much. And you did. You had all of them go from way above uh, above their nine-day moving averages uh, to 90 percent of them below the 90 nine-day moving average and you didn't have much of a pullback in actual price yes. you got you got your 382 retracement and you could expect a kind of nice move out there um, kind of flat out here today but my guess is that uh, it looks like a pretty good ABC on the way up and you can take uh, and uh, look for uh, and plan a trade out there for a one-to-one -one ABC yes. off those December 10th, 12th lows. And it's so cool, folks, when you when you when you already have the volume you've gone through the B point, then you're pulling back with light volume. Add the uh, Dave's uh, oscillator on top of it. It's a big number, man. I listen. I I I can't stand ABC structures when they break and I'm already in them, and they pull back. Now this one here, folks, it, it just broke, so it's not as bad. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, and and so the risk versus the reward is pretty cool because all you're doing is that you you looking what the price projection is, you're looking where the breakdown would be, and you, the stop can be minimal because the projection in the, particularly this one, Dave, right, is so high. I mean, it's you know that A to B leg was a nice leg. So if in fact we're in that, bottom line is that you get some big action. Well, it's also the divergence because yes. in this one, you had it go all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom, but you only got a small pullback. So that's telling you that even if you didn't look at the volume, that you had a pretty good pull, you had a decent pullback. Yeah. And everybody went below it. And guess what? You didn't have a lot of sellers. The things reversed out. It's already gone to the point where everybody's below. You didn't get a lot of price destruction. So that's telling you the divergence is that everybody's getting bearish. But guess what? It didn't go down that much. Cool. So the way you come in, folks, come over to our website at TFNN. You can subscribe to uh, the Path of Least Resistance. You can subscribe to uh, the Tech Insider. It's a, they both come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You'll be in the workshop. And my understanding, you know, Dave has laid this out, folks. This is going to be uh, fast information. It's going to be, what, about 30, 35 minutes, Dave, right? 40 minutes? It is. Yeah, I mean, it is. it's, it's going to be laid up. out. You're going to get great information, folks. You're not going to get tied up. You're going to have a great uh, workshop. So check it out right in the front page of TFNN. Dave, thanks so much. Look forward to the workshop in uh, 45 minutes. See you all then. Okay, man. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. 
Tom O'Brien publishes his gold report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll You'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day, starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour, following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m., followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So Dow Industrials finished uh, up 322, NASDAQ up 74, S&P's up 21. And what we're going to see out here, folks, the next couple days, this is going to be about uh, politics. <laughs> you know, markets uh, have been up. I just, you know, uh, bottom line about uh, making money uh, in these companies, bringing the, the revenue back, all of the above. Uh, but what you're going to see out here in the next couple days, I suspect, is going to be about uh, how uh, the government is either going to basically shut down uh, or not shut down come this Saturday, because uh, this, this is where this is shaking out right now. So as of the 19th, uh, let's see, temporary government funding runs out the 19th. The House and Senate are uh, heading uh, towards a temporary extension. And what, what is happening out here right now is that, uh, as in politics, the, you get the, both the Republicans and the Democrats playing chicken out here. So. Uh, the Democrats are demanding that the legislation include a, a provision permanently shielding the 690,000 documented, undocumented in, uh, immigrants which were brought to the U U.S. Um, as children from getting deported, uh, the DACA, okay? Uh, and this is what you have as of 4 o'clock. This is uh, what the bottom line is that uh, all the PR firms for Republicans and our Democrats are, are pushing out. Uh, the Republicans are betting that the Democrats won't force, won't risk forcing a government shutdown uh, during the election year. Um, uh, John Coyne from Texas, this is his quote, I am confident we won't have a shutdown. I don't believe Democrats are going to want to shut down the government over DACA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program. Uh, and this is where it comes down to. So inside the Senate, it's not so much the House. The Senate is the number here, folks. Uh, so you have a 51-41 edge in Republicans in the Senate, but they need 60 votes, okay, in order to advance the legislation. Uh, Dick Durbin, the leading Democrat negotiator on immigration, said that there's been goodwill but no progress in talks to enshrine the obama air DACA program into the law. Um, his quote is, I happen to believe many of my colleagues, even those from red states, believe it's finally time for us to take a stand and finally get DACA issues behind us. Um, he said, uh, Democrat leader Chuck Schumer knows each and every senator has to, uh, to decide how to vote on the stopgap funding measure and how it is going to be explained to their constituents. Because, you know, we're coming up to 2018, there's going to be a lot of people that are up for election. Um, White House Chief of Staff John Kelly met top Republicans and Democrats on Wednesday to resume immigration talks after days uh, of uh, the vulgar remarks attributed to the president about African nations, other countries. Uh, Republicans said there isn't time to make a deal this week. Now, this is where it comes, this is where it's going to shake out. And this is where I think that the, um, 
This is going to go right down to Friday afternoon, probably when we're trading. And what it is is this. So the deal they're trying to make right now is going to extend the payment uh, and the government until February 16th. And if you remember, if you've been through these before, the government actually doesn't shut down. But what does happen is that the non-essential services, the parks shut down, there's, there's, there's problems and people don't get paid. So there's problems. Bottom line, not as dramatic as sometimes the markets make it. But because we're at such highs all day long today, each and every time that, you know, you had uh, press releases coming out, the market was snapping up, snapping down, going all over the place. Now, here's the, here's the number, though. This is where this is going to get, I would say, dicier. And what it is is this, is that when Trump announced the end of the program, they, in the United States, legally, the undocumented immigrants can start getting deported on March 5th. And this is what the difference is. The difference is, is that these are already documented. They're undocumented immigrants, but the bottom line is not to be in that program. They already came in, they gave all the information, they already know where they live, all the above. Well, on March 5th, bottom line, that's when that would start taking place. That being said, this extension goes to February 16th. So you can see the correlation that the fight right now is that are you going to put that program inside the budget or not? Well, right now they don't want to put it, the, the administration doesn't want to put it inside the program. They're, that's what they're trying to negotiate out. Um, so the 16th to the 5th, that's pretty, that's pretty close in the, in the context of uh, are you going to kick the can down that dramatically? And guess what? It looks like they're going to. Uh, we've been talking a lot about the bond market. If we go over to that 10-year, 10-year out here trading at 122.19. And what you did have come out uh, after the close out here today, uh, China holdings and treasuries fell to a four-month low. Um, China's uh, treasury holdings are attracting attention after Bloomberg News reported last week that the government was considering tapering its purchases of U.S. government debt. Uh, China's holdings of U.S. bond notes and, bi and bills decreased 1.1 percent. That's nothing, folks. 1.1 percent. Give me a break. Uh, to 1.18 trillion. A trillion. Imagine that. Um, in November from the previous month. Uh, China remained the largest holder of U.S. treasuries ahead of Japan. So Japan right now uh, owns one point, well, as of, uh, let's see what... If they have the date here. Oh, this says in November. Okay, this is this is November, end of November numbers. Um, so China, Jap no, Jap yeah, China has 1.18 trillion. Japan has 1.08 trillion. Uh, that for Japan, that is the lowest level in four years, actually. Um, and that is the fourth straight decline uh, in Japanese holdings. The two countries account for a third of all foreign uh, ownership of treasuries. Uh, imagine that. That's a third. That's pretty intense between Japan and China. Um, yeah, that's pretty intense. Uh, now, what, what does happen is this. When, when you look at the aspect... Um, China has been rebuilding the, their foreign exchange and restricting capital outflows. Um, so if we go over to uh, either one of those markets, meaning you go to the treasuries in general, right? You can go to the 10-year, you can go to the 30-year. Fortunes have been made by these countries, you know, in that market. So you have two separate issues that are actually taking place here. You know, when you, when you take a look at here, I'll put up the 30-year so you can see how this thing shakes out. There's one thing owning the trillions and trillions of dollars uh, and getting the interest rate on them. Uh, the, other, the other deal is, is that, you know, you just go back to 2007 and you had the 30-year picture trading at, 100 and, at $100, 110, 105 to 110. So what that means is that, you know, you buy a 30-year, which they've been buying forever, um, in 2007, you bought it at $100. You're getting interest on it. And now your principal is $150. And you're paying $150 for a $100 bond. Isn't that cool? So you can imagine the amount of money that was made on them also. So each and every time that 
I actually see that, you know, folks saying that, okay, they're going to sell the whole thing down. We have to get a lot lower, folks, okay, for this has been the biggest bond bull that, well, the biggest bull market I've ever seen. I think most people, you know, unless you were around in the roaring 20s, I think this is probably, well, that didn't last that long either. This, this, is, this market here, you know, started out at $55 for a 30-year bond that's worth $100. And it's worth 150 now, and you got interest since, you know, the 80s. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal-clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal-clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Let's go over to Bitcoin for a second here. So what does happen, folks, is that when you get... Uh, so, so let's pitch to something here. We, the high in Bitcoin was established out here on the 18th of December. The high was 19,500. Um, that was the first day that the Chicago Merck actually traded. Uh, bottom line, what do you do? Five days later, you're down at uh, a low of 10,700. Uh, it doesn't close there, though. It closes at 14,200. Uh, it does a nice counter trend bounce, gets to 16,900, and then gives it up again here. So we get down to a low of 9,100 today. Um, I expect it's going to be wild, man. If this is the halfway move down, you can be down to the 1,000. You know, we'll see how that shakes out. I expect first what we're going to do, and we'll see how it handles the gap. There's a gap at 83.28 that it looks like it wants to go to. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up again, I, I talked about this in the first hour, uh, has to do with this. I just pulled up 
you know, so when the water goes out, this is when you get to see, like, inside the cryptocurrency world, you have cryptocurrencies, you have tokens, you have all of the above. And when the water does go out, folks, which it has, okay, and looks like it's going to go out further, that's when all the scams um, get revealed. It's just like when uh, Bernie Madoff, um, bottom line, blew up. He blew up when? He blew up when the market pulled back because then he couldn't use other people's money in order to uh, basically pay off people that were coming out because guess what? The whole thing went south and uh, on paper these people thought they had a lot of money. Well, that being said, you're going to see quite a bit of this, I suspect, in the uh, crypto market also. Uh, one of them out here today uh, that folks said, you know, said in the in the past that this is uh, no, not only a Ponzi scheme, uh, but you had a couple of, couple of the big uh, Bitcoin operators uh, saying the same thing. Well, more than likely, it looks like uh, uh, this is it. But guess what? It's not stopping the uh, owners from turning around and just redoing the whole deal again. So what this is all about, BitConnect. Uh, BitConnect isn't letting last week's shuttering of its cryptocurrency exchange and lending operations deter it from attempting to raise funds through another digital token offering. So check this out. This is amazing. They blew up last week. Now they're out here again. Um, and it's not, of course, sitting well with the existing coin owners who have seen the value of their tokens tumble by 95% since when? Monday, folks. It's only Wednesday, right? So it was down 95% since Monday. Um, bottom line, critics on Twitter and uh, Redet uh, have renewed allegations of fraud and are equating the company with a Ponzi scheme where the, an operator pays off old investors by raising, new, by raising money from new ones. Uh, in a posting on BitConnect's website Tuesday, the company attributed the shutdown to a continuous bad press about the platform, cease and desist orders from two states, and attacks from hackers. Despite that, people um, who access the web website are initially greeted with a solicitation from a company offshoot called BitConnect X, asking them to buy into the initial coin offering. Uh, fund manager uh, Mike Novogratz called BitConnect an uh, old school Ponzi uh, in a tweet last November um, that uh, uh, Violink Burton, who was the co-founder of Ethereum, highlighted on Twitter. The company was inviting people to deposit their Bitcoins in exchange for BitConnect coins. So picture this. You get a real coin, and people are exchanging it for BitConnect coin. But watch how he, watch how he did this, which could be lent to others at more than 40% a month. So picture this. You have something that's real value. And this is, this, is a, this is a typical Ponzi scheme. You have something that's real value. You uh, say to the person that, hey, guess what? Uh, bottom line is that we are offering 40%. If you give us this, we're going to basically issue BitConnect coins, and everyone's going to live happily ever after. This is where the greed factor, folks, is so dramatic. And most of the time, inside the Ponzi scheme world, the deal, the initial deal, is always too good to believe anyway, but people have so much greed that they take the initial deal, then they take them self. So, just to review it, the, the scheme would be, give us your Bitcoin, we're gonna issue Bitcoin, BitConnect coins, you're gonna get paid 40% a month as a premium. Guess what? They get nothing. Okay, so, uh, let's go, let's see where this, uh, Okay. The company was inviting people to deposit their bitcoins in the ex in exchange for Bitcoin BitConnect coins, which then could be lent to others at more than 40% a month, it claimed. It didn't list contract contact details or provide any information about its team or have a white paper, which is something most startup issuing coins do offer. But people poured money in anyway. Watch how crazy this is, folks. They not only poured money in, <coughs> On January 6th, so what are we, January 12th, 14th, where, where are we at? Time's flying. Time's always flying when you're having a good time, isn't it? Uh, bottom line, January 6th, I guess we're at the 15th, 16th, something like that. January 6th, it had a market cap 
of 2.6 billion with a B. 2.6 billion dollars. I mean, that's, that's, that's hard to comprehend. So we're at the 17th. Um, it went from 2.6 billion, and right now it's at 84 million. Um, users on Redet Wednesday said they had trouble exchanging their Bitcoin connects for Bitcoin. Of course they did. They're going to get nothing. The company said that we returned uh, $363 for every Bitcoin BitConnect coin uses held based on the average price over the last 15 days. Bitcoin Connects coins are trading $12.60. So picture this. This is pretty wild. So <clears throat> this is like we're in a, uh, a country that is imploding, like, uh, you know, Venezuela. Venezuela, let's say that they, they say they you have a, a black market for U.S. dollars and you have a what the government would pay for a U.S. dollar. So in this particular case... Bitcoin, BitConnect coins, you can go out right now, don't please, buy, don't buy any of these. You can buy as many as you want right now at $12.60. The company's claiming <clears throat> that for every one of these that, that you have, they will give you $363. So you can see right off the bat, you believe that, guess what, you're in trouble. Um, bottom line, BitConnect um, was known, a Ponzi scheme, was a known Ponzi scheme, Pumped over the last year on the basis of greater fool willing to buy tokens at a premium. Uh, uh, Lucas Nuzzi, he's an analyst at Digital Asset Research, said in an email, we have always been skeptical of the token's true market capitalization, uh, and this is where it's playing an inside game, as the majority of the volume was driven by BitConnect's own exchange, leading us to speculate whether the price and volume figures were accurate at all. And, of course, they weren't accurate because what ends up happening is that if you own the exchange, you're issuing the product, right? Guess what? They're manipulating the exchange on a continual basis like everyone's buying them. They're buying them every day you, you wake up. Imagine if a public company could turn around and just put their own prices on exchange every single day and control all of that. Forget it. So bottom line, folks, buyers beware. And that's also telling me, looking at that, uh, that the water... The tide has gone out. We're going to see a lot more of these um, get taken to the cleaners. And that's the moral of the story. Stay away. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. If you haven't tried David White's weekly investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, then this month is your perfect opportunity. On January 17th at 5 p.m., Dave will be hosting a special subscriber webinar where he'll be presenting on the newest feature in his newsletter, short-term sector charts that work on both the madness and wisdom of crowds. Join Dave on January 17th as he describes the method he uses to recognize these signals on a sector-by-sector -sector basis and as he discusses how he used this new tool to buy the gold miners in their seemingly darkest hour in December. And all new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. If you're a trader scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity, then now is a great time to sign up for the Technology Insider. For all the information and for details on Dave's subscriber event taking place January 17th, visit the front page of TFNN.com.
With over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet, while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver, now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity. If you'd like to find out more about Great Panther Silver, then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the NYSE market, symbol GPL, or the TSX, symbol GPR. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. And folks, don't forget, I'm at Mr. Dave White. You want to go to this workshop? That workshop's coming up in uh, 10 minutes uh, right here at TFNN. The way you do that, you come over to our website at TFNN. Uh, you're going to see it right in the top of the carousel. You can test drive uh, either his... Um, daily newsletter, which is the Path of Least Resistance, or the Tech Insider, which is a weekly newsletter, a 30-day money-back guarantee. You're going to be in a great workshop tonight. It's going to start at 5 o'clock, approximately go about 35 minutes. Dave's put together a nice oscillator that you can bisect and dissect uh, 22 sectors. So a uh, big number out here, no doubt about that. Let's go take a look at SPG. SPG, of course, is uh, Simon's uh, Property Group. This is up at 236 out here. And... This is where there's going to be a, a lot of intriguing things that are happening uh, inside the retail business, uh, you know, uh, because what you have, Simons is down from 228, you know, 167. This looks like, it still looks like a counter trend bounce to me. Uh, they did get some good news. The good news was uh, you get Starbucks that uh, is looking to close 77 um, uh, Tavita, Tavana tea stores. Uh, bottom line is that, uh, guess what? Starbucks is going to be paying for those leases for quite a while. That being said, uh, bottom line, that's shorter term, longer term, um, these malls, and, and Simons is a Class A mall. Bottom line, they're going to have to figure out what they can do to replace all these equities, these stores that are going to be closing, closing because you can see what happens. Uh, in this mall structure, uh, Simons, I mean, Starbucks has 77 stores, and if you've seen those stores, folks, they're beautiful stores. I never could figure out how a store like that anyway um, could be next to uh, these other high-end stores. You know, you go in there, you spend 20 or $30. They had so much space, it was unbelievable. They had, they had more space than the Starbucks um, coffee stores. That, that's the, the reality. The Starbucks coffee stores are actually pretty small, and the cor correlation of uh, how much they push out per square foot. Remember some folks, retailing is all about per square foot. You stay right there, folks. Uh, uh, come over to our website. Sign up for Dave's workshop right now. You're going to be really glad you did. Dow Industrials finished up 322. NASDAQ up 74. S&P's up 21. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com.